What's up guys, this episode we're gonna be setting up continuous integration using GitHub Actions. Now if you're not familiar with continuous integration, it basically means that when you push up code or make a pull request, you can run the tests against those changes and make sure that they're passing before you go and merge that code into master or before you deploy it or whatever it might be. So we're basically spinning up Docker images to run our code and we don't really have to worry too much about how all that works behind the scenes. We just define the steps that it takes to set up an environment and run our tests. So let's dive in. First thing you're gonna need to do is sign up for the GitHub Actions beta because it's currently in beta, you need to apply for that and get approved. And then you will see an actions tab on your repositories. Here you'll see a bunch of examples for GitHub Actions, but we're gonna create a custom one ourselves. So we can click that set up workflow yourself button. Now this is going to set it up so that we have an editor and we're creating a new file called .github workflows main.yaml in their example, but we can also do this locally in our own repository. Um, so we can say make directory dash p dot github workflows and we can create a file in there that will be our configuration. So let's go and do that. Let's edit uh, or let's create a file called github workflows ci dot yaml. So this file has a special format and it's a yaml format with a bunch of options that we need to define. First is the name, we wanna give this workflow a name and we're just gonna call our CI. We can tell it which events we want it to run on and for us we want to use push and pull requests to make sure that this workflow runs anytime code is pushed or a pull request is created. Then we can define a list of jobs. We just need one job to actually go and build and run our tests and so we can call this one test and we need to tell it which operating system this job runs on, which is Ubuntu latest. So we'll use the latest version of Ubuntu to run all of this code against. And we need to now define some services. So first one is our database service, and this could be either MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB, whatever database you're primarily using. For us, let's say Postgres 11, and this will pull up the Postgres version 11 Docker image for us and start that service up. Um, and we just need to say which ports it's running on. So 5432 should get uh, forwarded to 5432 so that it's available on our uh, machine when the Ruby environment is running. And then we will say options and we'll specify dash dash health command pg underscore is ready dash dash health interval 10 seconds dash dash health timeout uh, five seconds health retries is five. So those will just help make sure that our service continues running as we uh, compile everything and run our tests. So next we wanna use Redis. We're just gonna use the Redis image, the latest version of that. Our ports for this are going to be 6379, 6379, the default port for Redis. And our options here will be entry point Redis dash server. And then we can define the steps that we want our workflow to run. So the first thing we need to do on our server is basically clone the Git repo. And we can do that by using an external action definition. And here we will say action slash checkout at v1, that's a GitHub action that they have defined called checkout that will go and clone your Git repo for you. Then we can do another step here and we'll give it a name this time, which will be setup Ruby. And this time we want to use a different action that they've created called setup Ruby. And we'll use version one of that. And we're gonna pass in an option here. Uh, Ruby version is 2.6.x. So we want it to install the latest 2.6 version of Ruby. Then we can add one for yarn. So this one is uh, actions yarn at v2.0.0. That's just the current version of this external action that we're gonna use. And this one we want to use an option of install command so that it will install all of our node modules for us. And last but not least, we can have a build and run 
test step. Now this step's going to be the most configuration heavy out of all of our steps because we need to specify some environment variables for Rails to run, to create our database, to connect to Postgres and Redis and all of that stuff. So first things first, let's set a database URL. We wanna set this to our Postgres instance that we have, the service that was created. And the default credentials for this are just Postgres with no password at localhost, 5432 for the port and slash test or whatever we want to call our database name. Then we want to do the same thing for our Redis URL. So we'll say Redis colon slash slash localhost 6379, the default port. And we can use uh, slash zero as our database number or one or whatever we might want here. And then we also want to make sure we set rails env equals uh, test. And then we can also specify the Rails master key, but this one, because we don't want to actually put the key in directly here, because anyone could read this file, we can actually set up a uh, inserted value here. So if we say secrets dot Rails master key, we can actually go to our GitHub repo and define the Rails master key in there and store it there so it gets dynamically inserted in uh, this step of the build process. So to do that, you can go to the settings tab and then secrets in your GitHub repo and add a new secret name and say Rails master key in here and set the value to whatever it is, add your secret, and then it will be accessible inside of your GitHub action. So now that we have our environment set up, we need to run some commands. First things first, we want to apt-get uh, dash y qq install lib pq dash dev. That will make sure that we have the Postgres headers so we can compile the pg gem. Then if you need to copy over any files, you can do that. So if you have an example secrets file or something, you could say config secrets.yaml.example, copy that to config.secrets.yaml or slash here. If you need to do any of that stuff, you can. These are just bash commands that you can run in here. We don't need that, so we're gonna just gem install bundler, and then we're going to run bundle install, and we can say dash dash jobs is four, retry three to help it install a little bit faster. It can do four installs in parallel. And then we can run bundle exec rails db uh, prepare for Rails 6 and higher, or Rails DB setup for older versions of Rails. Since we're on Rails 6 for this, we'll run Rails DB prepare, and then bundle exec Rails test to finally run our tests. Now, we have this file set up, and all we need to do is commit it to our Git repo and push it up to GitHub for the actions to be available and to run. So in our terminal, we'll run git, git add GitHub, and git commit dash m add github action and push that up to our repository. And if we take a look at our actions tab now, we should see that we have a CI action and we do. And this will get kicked off and start running anytime now that we push code or create a pull request. So refreshing one more time, we can see that our CI has been picked up and has started running and it's going to go and do all of the setup, create our Postgres and Redis instances, run those containers and make it available to our Ruby code to go and run those tests. So we'll wait to see what happens and see if this succeeds or fails. So here's an example of a failing workflow. It has a list of all the steps that it took and in one of those steps it failed and that is where our problem is. So if we look through this, we can take a look at all these logs and they're just the output of the commands that we ran. So we can look through this and we see that some gems were installing and then we get to an error. And the error is because it's trying to install the SQLite 3 gem, but we haven't installed the dependencies on our Docker container in our workflow. So we actually need to take a look at this because we don't really want to be running SQLite in production. So we should actually update our application to switch to Postgres for our test suite as well because we don't want to be using a different database in tests as in uh, compared to production. 
So while we could edit our workflow here and just do another dependency in our apt install, we're gonna go to our gem file and change the SQLite dependency to the Postgres gem as our dependency. Now let's grab the latest PG gem version and make sure that we are set to that. And then we'll use PG as the database. Now it's gonna be good for us to go through our config database.yaml and actually change the adapter from SQLite to PostgreSQL. And that will make sure that we are using the PostgreSQL for each of these. And we can change the database name for these to production and test and development. And we'll actually call this one uh, net promoter score underscore development. And we'll do the same thing for these so we don't use an, uh, the same database name for two different apps. So we'll go ahead and save these changes and then uh, push that code up to GitHub. So we'll say git add dot, git status, git commit dash m, switch to Postgres. And we'll get push those up to GitHub. And if we click on the actions tab now, we'll see that we have another commit and a new CI job running and it will go ahead and kick this off um, in just a second. So I've gone ahead and set my credentials and my Rails master key and our tests are finally passing and we can go through and change the branch settings for our repository now. So one of the things we wanna do is add a branch protection rule. And this protection rule is gonna make sure we can't merge anything into a certain branch unless the tests are passing, or these other rules are passing. So if we say our master branch, we want to require status checks, um, we can click on test and we can even require branches be up to date before merging. So you wanna make sure that master has been pulled into your branch and that the merge will be very seamless. So this is something I'm gonna leave off for now so we can just focus on the status checks. But if we create this rule for the master branch, we can now go and create a branch here. Let's call it um, test actions. And let's just go edit the readme, something small. And we'll say, hello, save that. And we will go add the readme and commit it. And if we push this up to origin test actions, we can then create a pull request for that branch. So we can pull that branch into master. And when we do this, it will have a list of our workflows here down at the bottom. So it will wait until this check has finished. And if it succeeds, our button here will be green. And if it fails, that button will stay red. And now that our tests have passed, we get a green merge pull request button that says, hey, it's okay to merge these tests into master because the tests are still passing. So GitHub Actions are a great way to add continuous integration into your workflow so that when you're working on Git with other developers or even code that you've written a while ago, you can make sure that other changes you've done haven't broken the tests and that everything going into master or whatever primary branches you have are passing the tests always. That's going to increase the stability of your code and make your whole process a lot more reliable. So that's it for this episode. In the future, we'll talk about using another service like CircleCI to do continuous integration if you aren't interested in using GitHub Actions. But until then, we will talk to you in the next one. Peace.